We've been traveling like crazy this summer and I recently stayed with a friend of mine and he's got himself a bathroom more fitting of somebody who lives in a frat house as opposed to somebody in his mid to late 30s. There's cracks and loose grout all around the tub surround. He's got hard water so all the fixtures are all corroded and gross. And in the shower it looks like it was never sealed around the shower pan at the bottom. So he could run into issues with mold, rot, all sorts of stuff. So I figured as a thank you for letting me stay, I'm going to use some GE sealants to get this cleaned up and sealed for good. Now let's get started. The first First thing we're going to do is remove these corroded fixtures and see if we can salvage them. I think we can. We're just going to soak them in some vinegar for a while and see how that goes. Next, we're going to get to work removing all the loose and broken, gross grout and caulk and all that stuff out of here. Just use whatever tools you have available. You can use a painter's tool, a scraper, a screwdriver, box cutter, your teeth, your friend's toothbrush, whatever you got. Just try to get out as much of the gross stuff as possible. You can also invest in one of these tools if you want to, which makes your life maybe a little bit easier. This is the most time consuming part of the whole refresh but it's important that you do it and make sure that you get it really nice and clean so that way when you go to redo it you've got a nice clean surface and everything looks good if you do a nice job and you take your time it should look something like this if you have some rubbing alcohol available you can use that as well wipe that all around the grout lines and that way it just gives it an added level of cleanliness so that our sealant can stick to it better from there i like to use some painters tape or frog tape and create roughly an eighth to a quarter inch grout line because this is obviously going to be highly visible i use the tape so that you get a nice cleaner line and that way when you're applying your sealant everything looks nice and consistent mmm doesn't that look sexy from there we're just about ready to use our sealant for kitchen and bathroom applications you want to go with 100 percent pure sealant silicone, which is what this is from GE. This is called their Supreme Silicone, and I'm using it in the almond color because this bathtub is actually not really white. It's kind of an off-white, which is a little bit more like an almond, so that's what we're going to go with. You want to use 100% silicone because it's mildew and stain resistant, and it's also 100% waterproof. It's also shrink and crack proof, so it can expand and contract with the change in seasons, and you won't end up with a bunch of broken grout like this tub had previously. Here's a tip if you don't have a knife. Most caulk guns have a cutter built right into them, and then you just flip out this little doohickey here and poke a hole in it, you're good to go. You want to keep the hole relatively small in your caulk gun because you don't want to put out too much at one time. You can always make it bigger if you need to, but you can't make it smaller. I like to cut the tip on a little bit of an angle, apply solid pressure, and keep that solid pressure as you continually move the caulk gun so that you don't have a bunch of caulk piling up in one place. You don't want to put it on really heavy and have a bunch of extra caulk on top of the tape because you'll end up with a little bit of a lift and then that can hold water if the water runs down. It can create a shelf. It's a whole thing. So just try to keep it as clean as possible. Once you've got your bead run, you can come back with the old wet willy and just kind of smooth it out and make sure you've got a nice clean line. Don't mess with it a bunch because you're going to make a mess. And when you're done, you're going to have something that looks kind of like this. So now we're just going to let it set up for a while and I'm going to go focus on the shower instead. Shower is pretty much the same process. I'm not going to go over it fully again because you're not an idiot. Or I don't know, maybe you are. In that case, rewind the video. The only difference here is that I'm not going to bother with the tape and because the shower pan is kind of a gray, I think the clear version of the silicone looks better than the almond. So I'm going to go with the clear. And now I can let that set up and then I can go back to the tub. Look how productive I am. The sealant on the tub is set up so I can peel the tape off and then I can get back to working on reassembling the hardware. It's been sitting in the vinegar for about an hour and a half and it's cleaned up really well. Almost everything is pretty much gone or I've been able to scrub it off really easily with just a rag. Before I reinstall it, I'm going to take a minute and clean up these valve stems. They're a little corroded as well. So I'm using, you can use either a piece of steel wool. I used a piece of really fine grit sandpaper and just kind of cleaned them up. Tried to scrub off as much corrosion as I could. And I made myself a little dust shield because I don't want the dust falling directly onto the newly installed sealant. Even though it's set up, it's not fully cured. So I I don't want to have to drop it on there and then have to wipe it off and risk screwing it up. So I'm just going to make this little dust shield and it worked out pretty well. I probably could have done this beforehand, but you know what? I didn't. So now we're ready to reinstall the handles, get everything put back together. And guess what? I'm actually going to put some screws in them so that they stay in place. How about that? Now, one of the first things I noticed about this tub was that the faucet was actually recessed into the tile and it had a big overcut ring around it. And when I pulled the faucet off, I realized that whoever remodeled this bathroom the last time just tiled over the previous tile. And so when they went to go put on the faucet, the stub out was too short and they couldn't figure out how to do it. They suffer from lazy ass disease. And so they just left it. Apparently they didn't know that you could just buy a short little extension, put that on there. And you can also buy a ring that covers up that hole. And it's a really simple process. And so I got those two things and I put them on there and then I put everything back together and look how much better that looks. 
The other thing I noticed is that you couldn't take a bath in here if you wanted to because the drain stopper is missing a bunch of pieces. So I pulled that one out and I bought them a new one. Normally I would just replace this whole thing because the basin's a little bit corroded and the stainless looking finish is a little bit worn off, but he doesn't have a basin wrench and believe it or not, I don't travel with one. So I showed him the tool that he needs to get to do it himself. And for now, I'm just going to replace the components that are missing so that the thing can actually hold water and somebody could take a bath if they want to. Lastly, I reinstalled the shower heads so you can take a nice shower so it doesn't spit and sputter all over you. And there you go. My man's got himself a fully functional bathroom. His future guests have a bathroom they can actually use. And I was able to help out my friend while I was in town. Win-win. Thanks for checking out this project video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you share it with your friends. And I'd also appreciate it if you subscribe. Click the subscribe button down below and then make sure you have that notification bell turned on so you get notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.